Well, good afternoon. We want to welcome you to Seeds of Greatness Bible Church. And today we are going to uh, be focusing on mental wellness. Mental wellness. And we're so glad you're here. I want to thank those of you that are viewing online. Each week for the month of August on Thursday from 12 to 1, we will be talking about mental wellness. More than anything, God wants you well. And I want you to know that without a doubt in your mind. Uh, You might know it as well as I do that there, you know, we had a big crisis when COVID hit. Everyone was at a high alert of keeping their distance and, and, you know, making sure that they wore masks. And it was, it was just international, world, worldwide. And we pretty much have navigated through that and come through that. But there's something that is still going on around the world that is impacting each and every one of us. And there is a mental instability that is happening worldwide. People are losing their minds. People are are doing some extreme things. And and, and it could be from uh, mental illness. It could be from uh, uncontrolled anger. Uh, It could be uh, a disease of dementia, Alzheimer's, a whole lot of different things. But today, as a a believer, we want to focus on your wellness, mental wellness. You know, it's amazing how people will spend a lot of money uh, exercising and getting their body in shape. And a lot of times people will hire people, nutritionists, to take care of their diet. But we haven't focused or given our mental state the attention that we should give it. And it's okay, it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay not good. And this is why we have taken this month of August uh, and talking about uh, mental wellness. Now, I am not going to be the only teacher here. We're going to have different professionals in that field. We're going to have medical doctors in that field uh, to talk and and talk to you about some things. Now, uh, it's important that we understand that God wants us well mentally. God wants us well mentally. And we have to understand that that there is an adversary. Now, I'm going to be speaking from the spiritual aspect of mental wellness. But understand that there is an adversary out there. He is an adversary. He is an opponent of yours. He's an opponent of mine. He's doing everything that he possibly can to cause you to be unstable, to attack your mind. And if he can attack your mind, he's going to impact your choices. And this is where you and I have to really be aware of what we are going through. And and, and write this phrase down. You need to think about what you're thinking about. You need to think about what you're thinking about. The Bible says this in 1 Peter 5, 8, that the, the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And one of the things that he will do is he will try to influence and attack your mind. If the devil can influence and control your mind, he can control your life. If he can influence and control your mind, he can influence and control your life. And here's the two tools that the enemy uses to impact your thinking, your mind. Words and the power of suggestion. Words and the power of suggestion. Write this down, it's so important. Words are thoughts. Words are thoughts. Before you speak words, you think about it first. And this is where we have to be very selective on the words of our mouth. The Bible says this in Proverbs 18, 21, that death and life are in the power. Notice the power of the tongue comes from the tongue taking thoughts and forming them into words. It's important that you get that. We are responsible for our mental wellness. We are responsible for our mental wellness, and we have to do things to stay healthy mentally. We have to do things to stay healthy mentally. Do you know one of the things that will help you to stay healthy mentally is by meditating on the Word of God? 
And this is one of the things that God told Joshua in Joshua 1.8. He told Joshua to meditate on the Word. Think about the Word. And see, when you think about the Word, it frees you from worry. And worry is an attack on your mind. Worry is an attack on your mind. Worry, as I said to you on Sunday, is perverted meditation. Worry is perverted meditation. When you worry about something, it's constantly on your mind. You're constantly thinking about it. You're constantly thinking about it. And it gets planted in your heart when you take what you were thinking about and speak it out of your mouth. Because then those words become seeds that are planted in your heart. And this is why we have to deal with what are you thinking about? You ever hear somebody do something crazy? And then you ask them, why'd you do that? And they said, I don't know, I wasn't thinking. Think about what you're thinking about. We really have to really be that intentional when it comes down to our mind. Because the enemy throws his fiery darts. You know where he throws them? At your mind. He'll have you thinking people don't like you and they don't even know you. He'll have you formulating conclusions about things and you don't even have all the facts. They don't like me. Look how they looked at me. And all of a sudden, these thoughts, he's throwing fiery darts. The power of suggestion. The power of suggestion. Please hear me today. Negative thoughts become toxic to your body. Negative thoughts become toxic to your body. And this is why uh, affirmations of faith, confession, is very important. That you say things that are going to affirm what you believe. You say things that are going to build you up. You say things that are going to edify you. You say things that are going to encourage you. You be your biggest cheerleader. You be your biggest encourager. And don't allow negative thoughts to come out of your mouth. Because you, you can't stop the thoughts from coming, but you can stop them from being planted. And one of the ways you stop thoughts from being planted is by not speaking it. Because when you say it, you sow it. When you say it, you sow it. So even though you have a thought, you don't always have to cause that thought to be planted when you don't say it. You understand what I'm saying to you? And there are certain things like sometimes, you know, the devil might bring a thought to your mind. Uh, you should just kill yourself. Nobody loves you. Don't act on that thought. Don't act on that thought because what he's trying to do, he's trying to through the power of suggestion to try to make you think that people don't like you or your life's not worth living. The very fact that you are here today, the very fact that you are tuning in today means that God has a purpose, God has a plan for your life, and God's not done with you yet. Say it, God is not done with me. I'm not convinced you've got to say it louder. God is not done with me. You need to say that to yourself and you need to say this because I'm going to not only teach you, but we're going to apply it. I want you to say, I am somebody in Christ. I am, somebody in Christ. I am, beautiful. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am loved. And, I and I have value. Do you understand that those words of affirmation will change the whole uh, makeup on the inside of you? That it will cause your moods to shift. It will cause your attitude to shift. Just those positive words of affirmation. This is why when the scripture says in Proverbs 6, 2, it says we're snared or trapped by the words of our mouth. See, the devil a lot of times don't even have to trap us. Sometimes we trap ourselves by saying negative things. And one of the things we've got to learn to do is not say what you feel, say what you believe and say what you are expecting. Can you say amen to that? Say what you believe and say what you are expecting. 
there's a book that I'm reading, and it, one of the things that is said in the book that I thought was very important says, toxic thoughts are like poison to the body. Toxic thoughts are like poison to the body. And please hear me, brothers and sisters, you can't stop the thoughts from coming, but you can stop them from being planted. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Because we're in this world and the God of this world, he's throwing his fiery darts constantly. Not just at you, he's throwing them at me too. But I have to choose what thoughts are from God and what thoughts are from the devil. And the thoughts that God brings, I agree with. The thoughts that the devil brings, I take them in captivity and cast them down. And this is what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It says, take every thought into captivity that is not obedient to the word. So when negative thoughts come, you ask yourself, is this from God or is this from the devil? If it's from God, you agree with the thoughts. If it's from the devil, you cast it down. The Bible says, the Bible says, even though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. When negative thoughts come to you, you don't always have to speak them out. In fact, you shouldn't speak them out. Sometimes you'll think, I'm not good enough. Don't think those thoughts. That didn't come from God. How can I know that didn't come from God? Because he says you're his workmanship. You're created in the image of Jesus. So that didn't come from God. And see, the only way we can deal with toxic negative thoughts is we've got to know what the Bible says. If we don't know what the Word of God says when it comes down to our thought life, then a negative thought will come and we'll think that that's God saying that about us. No, listen, there is no parent in the natural that loves their children that will call them anything other than their name. If we are like that in the natural, how much more your heavenly Father, if you're created in his image and after his likeness, you are his handiwork. Say it, I'm God's handiwork. I'm not convinced, you gotta say it louder. I'm God's handiwork. You know what that word handiwork means? Masterpiece. You've gotta see yourself as God's masterpiece. And even on a bad day, I'm God's masterpiece. Even when it's raining outside, I'm God's masterpiece. Even when people don't like me, I'm God's masterpiece. What am I doing? With my words, please hear me today. With my words, I'm programming my mind. With my words, I'm programming my mind. I'm shifting my thinking. Because we live in such a negative world. We live in such a toxic world. We live in such a fear-driven world. We've got to reprogram our minds by taking the Word of God and renewing our minds with the Word of God. Can you say amen to that? Toxic thoughts will damage your brain. Every cell in your body is impacted by your thoughts. Every cell in your body is impacted by your thoughts, whether they're positive or negative. And as I said before, words are nothing more than thoughts with clothes on them. Words are nothing more than thoughts with clothes put on them. And you think about what I'm saying to you. You have a thought, it don't mean nothing until you speak it out. Now, it's, you, you gave it a personality, you gave it clothes. You understand what I'm saying to you? And this is why as people of God, we've got to make sure that we think about what we're thinking about and ask ourselves, is this lining up with God's word or is this coming from the devil? And you, you can't know that it's lining up with God's word if you're not spending time reading God's word. The enemy's after your mind. I said, the enemy's after your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. What is he saying? You become a product of your dominating thought. You become a product of your dominating thought. What are you going to do with those negative thoughts from your childhood? You're going to have to reprogram your mind. What do you do about those negative uh, thoughts based off of bad relationships? 
you're going to have to reprogram your mind. Because you can come out of a toxic relationship and feel like you're not good enough, you don't measure up, you don't have what it takes, nobody loves me, nobody will like me, I'm going to be like this the rest of my life. Stop allowing that recorder to play in your head. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Don't allow it to play in your head. Thoughts, get this, thoughts are measurable and thoughts are active. Thoughts can grow and they can influence your decisions. Thoughts will influence your decisions. All you have to do is be in a work environment and everyone talk a certain way and it will start to impact your decision. You think everybody on the job is leaving, so you leaving now and God sent you there. God gave you that job. God placed you on that job. God opened that door for you. But because you've gotten around negative people that don't like their job, now you don't like your job. When you first got that job, you was praising and shouting and thanking God. Now you've been there for six months and now you hate the very thing that you prayed for. Because thoughts can be influenced, thoughts can influence your decisions. Thoughts will influence your actions. How many of you thought somebody didn't like you and you started acting funny to them, towards them, and they didn't even know you? <laughs> hmm? Just the thought. Have you ever walked into a room and thought everybody was looking at you? And at the end of the day, they didn't even see you walk in the room. Thoughts. Have you ever felt like God was mad at you? Hmm? Do you think that thought came from him? Came from, it came from the devil. And so this is, listen, listen to what this scripture says in, 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 in 3 John chapter 2. You're familiar with this, but I want you to look at it in light of mental wellness because that's what we want for you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Look what it says here in 3 John. It says, beloved, I pray that you are prosperous in every way. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, NLT. I pray that you are prosperous in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. God wants your soul healthy. And there has been an all-out attack on the soul, on people's mental state. The shootings, all of these things, you'll find that people are dealing with anger issues, they're dealing with an instability when it comes down to their mental state. The devil is throwing everything that he can at the human race to get us in a place of losing our minds. But child of God, you declare in the name of Jesus, I have the mind of Christ in every given situation and the Holy Spirit orders and directs my steps and I will always be filled with the wisdom of God in Jesus' name. That's what you declare over yourself. Stop saying things that the world says. I feel like I'm losing my mind. These people are driving me crazy. I'm about to lose it. Stop talking like that. Stop talking like that. And you start declaring what you believe. My soul is prospering. My soul is increasing in wisdom. I know what to do because the Holy Spirit orders and directs my steps. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Can you say amen to that? These are things that we have to be very intentional. I said we have to be very intentional when it comes down to our minds, when it comes down to our soul. As you get older, stop saying I'm losing my mind. Stop saying, I can't remember anything. Stop, you. listen, stop allowing toxicity to come out of your mouth and be deposited back into your heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? If you can't speak the word, keep your mouth closed. Now, some of you thinking, I ain't going to talk a lot. Well, good for you. <laughs> good for you. But you want to guard this. Please hear me. I'm about to make a very important statement. The doorway to your spirit is your mouth. 
I said, the doorway to your spirit is your mouth. If you want to make deposits into your spirit, it starts with you making deposits in your mouth. So important. So important. Choose the thoughts that you want to say. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And be very intentional about it. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. Now get this, spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice it says we wrestle. So we are wrestling. You know what that word for wrestling means? Hand-to-hand combat. Hand-to-hand combat in close proximity. And you know where the wrestling goes on at? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I go? Should I not go? Should I buy it? Or should I wait for the sale? (laughs) See, when the flesh moves by impulse, you will not wait. I said, when the flesh moves by impulse, you will not wait. When the flesh moves by impulse, you'll say what you think instead of think before you say. How many times have we said things and then after we said it, we thought, shouldn't have said that. Here's the thing you need to understand about your words. When you speak words, you're not only making a deposit in the person that hears you, but you're making a deposit in yourself. That's where the word becomes a two-edged sword. It not only cuts into the person who's listening to you, but it also cuts into you also. And you need to ask yourself, do I want to be on the other end of, of what I'm about to say? Do I want to be on the other end of what I'm about to say? And this is, brothers and sisters, I can't tell you how important guarding your mental state, guarding your soul is. Because if you don't guard it, the enemy will bombard it. I said, if you don't guard it, the enemy will bombard it. Your mind, your soul is is your responsibility as a child of God. Can you say amen to this? The Bible says this in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. It says, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved. The word preserved here means kept, blameless until the coming of the Lord. So if Paul is praying this over us, then there's a possibility it's possible. But we've got to do some things. If we want our bodies to be kept, if we want our spirits to be kept, if we want our souls to be kept, then we've got something to do. We've got to do something. Now, most people keep their body because they exercise. They'll spend money to go to the gym, spend thousands of dollars for gym membership because they're keeping their body. Nothing wrong with that. People will spend hundreds of dollars for a nutritionist to make sure they eat right. Nothing wrong with that. But how much money and how much time are you giving to strengthen and have a healthy soul? You go shopping at Macy's or Nordstrom's to make sure that body looks good. You'll go to the best gym store to get the best sneakers to put on those feet so that that body can look good. And then stand there on Facebook and take a selfie. (laughs) You want that body to look good. How much time are you giving to your soul? Hmm? How much time are you giving to your soul? It's interesting to me because when you talk about healing and when you talk about wellness, people a lot of times focus on the spiritual side of it. I'm going to confess the word of God. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. That's nice. You should do that on the spiritual side. But there's also a natural side to healing. There's also a natural side. And that natural side is our responsibility. God's not going to do some things for you. God's not going to make you drink water. 
Even though you know you should drink it, and you tell yourself, you know, I should drink more water. Well, you, you can keep saying that until Jesus comes, but if you don't drink water, you're going to have a problem with dehydration. That's the natural side. You should get rest. Do you know that resting is so important so that your body can rejuvenate itself when you're sleeping? You have to get rest. That's the natural side. Eating right. You can't eat a bunch of sweets and not have problems. That's so important. And see, a lot of times we want to say, I'm believing God. Well, that's wonderful. But are you doing both? Listen, there has to be a balance. Spiritual side and the natural side. You can run 100 miles a day, but how much time are you taking to meditate on the Word of God as you're running? Can you say amen to this? Your mind is the central control center of your life. Your mind is where the devil tries to manipulate your feelings to control your body. I'll say that again. Your mind is the central control center of your life. Your mind is where the enemy will try to manipulate your feelings to control your body. He'll try to manipulate you. And so many times, even, even here's, here's something you need to understand. When it comes down to your soul, your mind... The enemy will try to get you in a place of offense. And if he can get you in a place of offense and unforgiveness, it's just as negative as toxic words. Because when you get into an offense, when you get into unforgiveness, your mind is resting in a place of fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Your mind is resting in a place of fault, and it's as toxic as negative words. I was reading a a book on anger, and it said when a person gets angry, their anger causes the brain to lose oxygen when they're angry. And when they get angry, they lose oxygen to the brain, and it causes them not to think accurately. And you know, if you ask a lot of times people do things when they're angry, they say, I don't even remember doing that. Because the oxygen is minimized to the brain, and it impacts their choices. This is why the Bible tells us to put off anger or to be angry and sin not. Are you following what I'm saying to you? It's another toxicity that the enemy is targeting your brain. Listen. Don't speak negative words against yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? What is a toxic thought? What is a toxic thought? I'm talking about the soul because he wants our soul to prosper. Isn't that what scripture says? He wants our soul to prosper. Toxic thoughts are thoughts that trigger negative and anxious emotions. Toxic thoughts are thoughts that trigger negative and anxious emotions, which causes stress to the body. I am, I am, I would say 99.9% a positive person. I'm not perfect. That's why I'm saying 99.9. I, uh, and I'm, I'm not just like that in church. I try to live my life like that. Because back in 1980, 81, when I went to Bible school, the first thing they taught us the very first week was the power of words. That was back in 1980. And I'm telling you, that was that 41 years ago? 42 years ago. That made such an impact on my life, the importance of the words that we speak. Jesus said, by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you'll be condemned. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 6, 2, you're snared by the words of your mouth. Your words have a direct impact on your mental health. And this is why for me as a pastor, 
I constantly having you saying things of affirmation and of faith because what I'm trying to do is make a deposit, number one, into your spirit, but then at the same time, I'm shifting your mental state through the words of your mouth. I do that on Sunday. You can do that every day of your life. When you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror, you speak to yourself and call yourself beautiful. You call yourself the righteousness of God. You call yourself an overcomer. You call yourself the head and not the tail. You call yourself above only and not beneath. You speak those words of faith over yourself and you're reprogramming your mind. The Bible says in Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transform. You know what transform means? It means to change. If you want to change some things, it starts with your mouth and your mind. If you want to change some things, it starts with your mouth and your mind. You've got to speak it to release it into your heart and into the transforming power of your mind. But you've got to do that. Listen, when you understand what I'm saying to you right now, nobody can hold you down. Nobody. Not your ex, not your future, not your past. No one and nothing can hold you down when you realize you have the power in your mouth. Death and life are where? In the where? In the where? Oh, so your tongue has power. You up there asking God for power and he's giving you a mouth. You're asking God for power and he's giving you a mouth. Do you know that there's so much power in your mouth that can change the way you think? How many of you remember the, 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 the I remember this, my mother taught me this. I knew it in school, but my mother used to use this. You remember the little train that could? This little train had to go up this hill. And it thought it couldn't do it. And, it. and it started saying, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Every little, every little boast, a boost of, of smoke that came out said, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I thi I'd rather you say, I think I can, than I know I can't. And when it got up the mountain and went down, it says, I know I can no, I can't. And sometimes you've got to talk yourself through some things by using the power of your tongue to reprogram your mind. Romans 12, 2 in the NLT said, if you want to change your life, change your thinking. Glory to God. If you want to change your life, change your thinking. I'm telling you, you might hear this again on Sunday. If you want to change your life, change your thinking. Because here at one time is not enough. It's the repetition of hearing it over and over again. You might say, Pastor, I know it. Do you know it? Pastor, I've heard that. Have you heard it? Because if you're not doing it, you don't know it and you haven't heard it. Amen. See, when you hear the word and it transforms you, now I know you heard it. But if you've heard the word and you haven't changed, you haven't heard it. You just listened. You just listened. Transformation comes, change comes. Oh, you hear what I'm saying to you? Transformation comes, change comes. And this is why a lot of times people say, I know that, I know that. They don't really don't know it because when you hear something, transformation should come. And if transformation really takes place, it should change the behavior. Toxic thoughts are thoughts that trigger negative and anxious emotions, which produces stress in the body. Every single thought, whether positive or negative, goes through this process when it's formed. As you think, your thoughts are activated. And your thoughts, when they are activated turns into an attitude. <laughs> now, you know I'm telling you the truth right now because you have a thought about somebody and it shifts your attitude, right? You thought they didn't like you, 
what happened? Your attitude changes, right? You thought they didn't want you to come to the party? What happens? Your attitude changes towards them. Is that right? I mean, this is, this is what happens in our lives. And as people of God, we can make a choice. And sometimes our choices start with what we say. What do you mean? Someone says, are you doing this? Your choice changes when you say, I'm not doing that. I'm not giving you any money. I'm not giving you a ride. Right? The devil is after your mind. Say this, he's not getting my mind. How can I stop him from getting my mind? You have to put on the helmet of salvation. That's why the armor is so important. People walking around naked spiritually. It says put on the whole armor of God, not pieces. And the helmet of salvation is not being born again. The helmet of salvation is mental protection. The helmet of salvation is mental protection. It guards your mind because he's throwing his fiery darts at your mind. He throws them at your mind and he will try to even invade your sleep. Come on, put your hands on your head. Come on, put your hands on your head. You know what David said in Psalms 23? He restores my soul. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bring restoration to the souls of your people and even those that are viewing online, that you would bring restoration to their soul. I come against anxiety. I come against fear. I come against pressure. I come against stress. I come against uh, mental instability. And Father, I thank you for the peace of God that rules their minds in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 26. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. All right? We're talking about mental wellness, right? I said, right? We want you to be well mentally. We don't want you to go around, you know, because sometimes there's, there's chemical imbalances in the mind. Sometimes there's uh, things that you, you can live under stress for so long that you can become accustomed to the stress. God doesn't want you living like that. God, but, but listen to me. It's not going to happen automatically. One of the things I listen to is I listen to good, soothing jazz music. And the reason why I listen to jazz music, because sometimes when you listen to songs with words, you have to think about what they're talking about in the song. I don't even want to think about it. I just want the music. <laughs> and sometimes I'll put on ocean sound. I can hear water, waterfalls just to relax my mind. You've got to do things that put you in a healthy mental state. It's your responsibility. You cannot rely on your girlfriends, your buddies, your family members. You can't even rely on your pastor to do it. I'll teach you the word, but when you leave here, you still got to do things six days a week because you can't live in church. So you have to do things on your own. When you get in the car, turn off all that Power 99 and all of this stuff, and they sing in song, like, drop it like it's hot. You don't need to drop nothing. You need to put on something that's going to soothe your soul. Do you remember when Saul was being tormented by the evil spirit? Remember that? Do you know what happened? David came and began to play. David didn't sing. He played the harp. And the Bible says that that, that harassing spirit lifted off of him because of good music. It don't have to be Maverick City. Thank God for Maverick City. They're a good group. But sometimes the words can make your mind run. You know what I'm saying? I just want instrumental, some strings. Just something's going to soothe me. And you got to do that for yourself. When I get on my bike and ride my bike, I put on some nice jazz music. Now, you can do what you want. You can put on honky-tonk, whatever you want to do. I mean, R&B, whatever. Do something that's going to bring some comfort and peace to your soul. It's your responsibility as a child of God. You are the janitor of that temple. We're the temple of the living God. Every temple needs a janitor to keep it clean. It's your responsibility to be the maintenance person to make sure the temple is clean. 
And you have to do things to help that. Look what it says here in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. It says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you and all whose thoughts, did you get that? Whose thoughts are fixed on you. So what are you thinking about? What are you focusing your mind on? Sometimes we're thinking so far ahead we're worrying about the future. Sometimes we're carrying so much from our past we're carrying the past. He says, fix your mind on Jesus. How do I fix my mind on Jesus? The way I fix my mind on Jesus is I fix my mind on his word. I fix my mind on his word. How do I fix my mind on his word? Turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Starting at verse 4, Philippians 4.4. 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I think I probably want to read that in the Passion too. Philippians 4.4. 4. Philippians 4.4. 4. Praise God for his grace. Is this helping you today? Philippians 4.4. 4. Listen to what it says in the New Living Translation, the NLT. It says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let everyone else that you are, let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Look at verse 6. What's the first four words there? Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing, mama. Don't worry about anything. Is that possible? I don't know, Pastor. It says don't worry about anything. And sometimes you got to tell yourself, when people come and dump stuff on you, I ain't worrying about that. I ain't worrying about that. So-and-so got put out. I ain't worrying about that. So-and-so got a flat tire. I ain't worrying about that. So-and-so needs money. Oh, I ain't worrying about that. (laughs) Don't worry about anything. But what about your kids? Don't worry about anything. Listen, if God can't take care of them, you can't. So you might as well put them in his hands. Why are you carrying that when God says, I got them? You know what that means? You're not trusting God. I know you don't want to hear that, but you're not trusting God. If you feel like you got to cover them, take care of them, provide for them, be there for them, you're, you're, you're trying to be everything that God said he would be. Sometimes you got to tell yourself, I ain't worrying about that. Look at the people around you and say, I ain't worrying about that. I ain't worrying about that. Don't worry about anything. What, what does he say? Instead, do what? Pray. Well, see, that's where the devil's attacking people because nobody wants to pray. You mean we got to pray now? Yes, it's prayer about everything. You want to go to the mall? Let me pray about it. You want to go to Chick-fil-A? Let me pray about it. What about Cane's? I want to pray about that. Oh, bro, you ain't got to pray about that. Let's just go get some chicken. No, he said pray about everything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. What? See, what did it say? I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is fixed on me. See, one of the things we need to get in the habit of doing is thanking God for what he's already done. We don't thank him enough for what he's already done. You might not have everything now that you need, but think about that prayer years ago when you didn't even have a car. He gave you the car. You need to thank him for everything that he's done. When you didn't have a job, you couldn't even afford a pair of sneakers. Now you got a bunch of sneakers. You remember you only had one pair of shoes, and now you got a whole thing with tags on them. You need to thank God for what he's already done. Get in the habit of being thankful, and it will do something to your thinking. 
It'll do something to your attitude. One of the reasons why we are so worry, full of worry is because we're not thankful enough. We need to be a little bit more thankful for what God has done. Stop comparing yourself to other people. You might see people with a lot of stuff, but they don't look happy. They ain't happy because they got stuff. Notice what he says here. He says, tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. <laughs> Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. God, I need this. I just want to thank you, though, for my home. I thank you, God, that you've put food in our cupboard. God, I thank you for my children serving you. God, I just want to thank you, God, that you got my body healthy and strong. God, I want to thank you I'm in my right mind. God, I just want to thank you that my parents raised me the right way. God, I want to thank you. You know what it does? It stops you from worrying about what you need. <laughs> You're so focused on thanking God for what he's done, and then all of a sudden what you need shows up. Now you got something else to add to thanking him for. That does something to your mind. See, you can't worry and praise God at the same time. <laughs> you can't. When you find worry bombarding your mind, shift. What do you mean shift? Just start looking back at what he's brought you through, looking back at what he's given to you, looking back at how he's kept you. When worry tries to bombard your mind, do you know most of the time worry isn't about the past, it's usually about the future? And you need to start thanking God. He tells us right here, he says, tell God what you need. It's okay to tell God what you need. But after you tell him what you need and thank him for all he's done, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds everything you can understand. His peace will guard your heart and notice what the peace will do. It will guard your mind. It will guard your mind. What do you mean? Can you imagine this podium is your mind? And then you have guards standing around it. Anything that tries to get to your mind, the guards say, you can't come here. That peace is like that. Peace will guard your mind. So listen, child of God, so that you can sleep at nighttime. So that you can sleep without having to look under the bed and keep all the lights on. So you, don't have to, you can walk into a dark room with confidence. Peace. Can you say amen to this? It says, his peace will guard your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, now, now dear brother and sister, one final thing. Look what it says here in verse 8. One final thing. What's the first three words? Fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts. You know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like Colossians 3, 2. Set your affection on things that are above. That's what it says in Colossians. Set your affection on things above. You need to focus your mind on the Word of God. You need to focus your mind on the blessing that God has been in your life. You need to focus your mind on, I'm going to praise God instead of worry. You need to focus your mind. I'm going to thank God for what he's done instead of be negative. Don't allow negative people to deposit negativity down on the inside of you. Don't you deposit ne negativity down on the inside of yourself because negativity makes your mind and your brain and your attitude toxic. And it's your responsibility. Who's the janitor of the temple? Come on, talk to me. Who's the janitor of the temple? You better keep it clean because there's going to be an inspection. <laughs> he says, fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts. Mental wellness starts with your thought life. And these are things you can do. Of course, sometimes physically, the mind can be in a place that it needs medicine or it needs some things. Do what you have to do to stay well. 
Sometimes people don't want to, they take pills for their pain and their muscles. They take, they wear glasses for their eyes, but they don't do anything to make their brain or their mind fresh and healthy. If you have to take vitamins, take vitamins. These are things that can help you as you become older. Can you say amen to this? He says, fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent, worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me. Everything you've heard from me and saw me doing, then the peace of God will be with you. And isn't that what you want? I said, isn't that what you want? Don't you want peace in your mind when you're going throughout your day? Don't you want peace when you lie down at night? Don't you want peace when you're in a room full of people? Don't you want peace when you're with your family? That peace can only come to you as you fix your mind, fix your thoughts on the things that God has encouraged us to do. Can you say amen to that? I want to read it to you in the Passion Bible, and then we'll be done. <clears throat> It says, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Wow. You're going to go through seasons in life. And he says here, he says, be cheerful. That's a choice. You can walk around with a lip hanging to the ground, or you can just be cheerful. You don't have to be weird to be cheerful. He says, be cheerful. How you doing? I'm doing well. No, don't act stupid. You can be cheerful with acting stupid or foolish, right? He says, be cheerful. He says, let your joy overflow and let gentleness be seen in, oh, Jesus. Let gentleness be seen in every relationship. People that are mean towards you, be gentle towards them. People who talk about you like a dog, be gentle towards them. Well, I'm going to match their energy. That ain't scriptural. You don't have to match nobody's energy. You match fire with fire, you ain't going to come out of that not being burned. Say, I don't know why I got burned by that, because you came with the same heat they came with. Right? The, best, the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. A soft answer. So that means you got to do the opposite of what comes at you. Well, they're going to think I'm soft. Listen, they already think about you already. <laughs> Just don't match their energy. Fire with fire will cause you both to get burned. Can you say amen to this? It says, let gentleness be seen in every relationship, for our Lord is very near. Don't be pulled. Oh, Lord Jesus. Look at this scripture here. Y'all seeing this? Verse 6. Don't be pulled in different directions or worry about a thing. Sound like that song again. Don't you worry about a thing. Notice it says, don't be pulled in different directions or worry about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. This is what we're not doing. We're not being saturated in prayer. We're not talking to God about stuff. When you pray, you're not only just talking to God, but you're being quiet and listen. See, a lot of times people... Treat prayer like a machine gun. God, 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 I need this. God, 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 I want this. God, God, I got to have this. God, no, no. Sometimes in prayer, you just be quiet and listen to him. Being silent is just as much prayer as talking. Did you know that? Don't be pulled in different directions or worry about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him everything, every, listen to this. Tell him every detail of your life. God, I need shoestrings for my shoes. Do you know he's interested in the details? Then God's wonderful peace will transcend human understanding. That means sometimes when you talk to God about the simple details... He will show up in such a way that will give you peace that you can't even understand how you can be so peaceful with all the stuff you got going on. People look at you and say, I don't know how you do it. You ain't doing it. He's doing it through you. Yeah. 
Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Look at this. <clears throat> Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all of this, all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful, respectful, pure, holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts. You need to lock in. That's what it's saying. Lock in your thoughts. Now, you might be having a, a bad relationship or a good relationship. Listen, you in that relationship because something was good about it. Sometimes we will focus on the 5% and not realize 95% of it's good. I used this illustration before, and I don't have a piece of... Does someone have a pen, an uh, ink pen? Can you bring it to me for a moment, please? I'm going to use an illustration that I've done before, and I'm going to see if you get it. Thank you. I'll make sure you get it back. Okay, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see over here? What do you see? What do you see? No, you, you was in class before. What do you see? Okay, what do you see? Now, most of you said, I see a black dot, right? Isn't that what y'all saw was a black dot? But the white paper was bigger. And you know what we did? We focus on the dot instead of all of this. And that's what we do in life. We focus on the little problem, and there's so much positive around. What are you focusing on? Y'all ain't saying nothing. What you focus on? He says here, fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always, put into practice the example of all that you have heard from me, seen in my life, and the Lord and the God of peace will be with you in all things. My prayer for you today, as we begin this series for the month of August, is that you will be in a place in the days and weeks ahead, in a place of mental wellness. Amen. And I want to encourage you, those of you that are viewing online, thank you for tuning in. Those of you that are here in the sanctuary, I want to encourage you next Thursday at 12, from 12 to 1, we're going to do this for the month of August because we want you to be whole. We want your soul to be prosperous. We want your soul to be healthy. And the thing that brings ultimate wholeness is the Spirit of God and the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the great, mighty one, the Holy Spirit, who is our helper and our guide. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that our souls are prospering from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet. We thank you for those that are viewing online. We thank you for those that are in the sanctuary. And Father, we thank you that you restore our soul and lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for viewing online. Thank you for being here in the sanctuary. We'll see you next Thursday dealing with mental wellness. Did I say August? Okay, it is July. Okay, they'll get it. We'll post it. Thank you. <laughs>